but this is like that. But I was better already. Imagine before, before the Taiwanese could not even go anywhere, <laughs> except go into Kaohsiung, yeah, <laughs> or Taipei. <laughs> you know, you can go the whole length of the country, or cross it, yeah, <laughs> free, yeah. Well, that's already very good. In some older times, if you remember, you could not even go from one district to another without permission, a stamp or something like that. Some countries before were like that. So our world is truly getting better. It's just snail pace for me, you know? Snail. <laughs> we call, oh, turtle. Turtle pace for me. Too slow. But it's getting better, yeah? More civilized, right? At least like that. We have to practice more in order to have wisdom, but it's very difficult for you to, to feel the difference between wisdom and your own judgment. I tell you some example of wisdom and your own preconceived ideas, judgments. I have written it. Point, 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 you know, so that I can talk to you, so that you can be more aware of the traps of your own mind and your own uh, customs, society customs and prejudices. Yes. But I moved and I walked the whole little house. I could not find it. It was together with my diary. I cannot find it just now. And I was already late negotiating to come out to see you. I wasn't successful in negotiating but I say, I go anyway. And then I still could not find my <laughs> things that I wanted to tell you. <laughs> so it's later and later. And then I call one of your brothers just to ask whether or not he had what he needed to go, okay? And he told me every other thing except that question. So I had to scream at him, say, okay, <laughs> just tell me, you got it or not? <laughs> and he said, got it. <laughs> I said, okay, thank you, now go <laughs> with God. I was already in a hurry to come to see you. And he talked about the history of his unpacking and packing his luggage. <laughs> yeah. And I asked him, where are you? He didn't tell me that. He told me many other things. I just asked, where are you? <laughs> One simple question. Another question, did you get what I sent? And that's all I asked. Everything else you can tell me on another day, I'm telling you. But I have one thing that you need desperately, and all of you must have, should have, wisdom. I'm going to prove it to you. <laughs> Otherwise you think, oh, Master, you're boasting. How do we know if you have wisdom? Very simple, very simple to check. I'm not lying to you, I cannot. If you have a little brain and you understand English or Chinese, well, I'm going to prove it to you. I had it all on a little piece of paper, but I couldn't find it. So what I remember, I tell you, okay, huh? It's not the same though, maybe, maybe I can't remember as good as I want to remember. For example, one thing, when I was in Hungary, okay, I'm not trying to blame anybody, I'm just trying to give you lessons. So don't judge them, huh? Okay. There were many dogs that they adopted. You know, later I took them with me because I didn't think they'd take good care in Hungary the way they did. When I was there, I took them in my trailer every night to give them some warm things to eat with me, and they loved, loved, loved it. <laughs> okay. There were dogs, yeah, and the whole yard was uh, muddy because of winter, you know, the ice and the rain and muddy, muddy, and the dogs, paw, of course, muddy. And I was wearing a white coat. I needed to go to see you. So one or two dogs jumped on me. I said, no jump, just like that, no jump. <laughs> Tried to jump, I said, no jump. And then later one of your brothers told me, you scare the dogs. I said, what did I do? You say, no jump. I said, wow. And you let them sleep outside in the mud, in the cold, in the snow, minus 20, minus 30, you don't think it scares them? You think that is better than when I just uh, tell them not to jump? You think you have more compassion than me? Huh? 
So that is wisdom and judgment. Immediately when I went there, I saw their situation. One of the dogs had very thin hair. If they had thicker hair, maybe they could have it. Some of them had thicker hair, but one, boyo, very thin. I could see the skin, oh my God, and he had no room, no cover shed outside. Not even the dog house, you understand me? The dog house maybe had the front open, but everywhere else was closed. Nothing. Just a little cemented, no, not cement. You know those kinds of uh, wavy cemented pieces of uh, sheet they make a roof with sometimes? So one sheet of that attached to the wall, that's all he had. And of course he dug a hole, you know, as much as he could with such a hard winter, solid ground to have a little shallow hole and he slept in there. Immediately I said, we have to cover all this. And I gave them warm food every night with me together in my trailer. That is real love, okay? And not to judge me like I scolded the dogs, not to jump on me. My love is not to let them jump on me, but to teach them not to jump on me. We have dogs, yeah? All the dog experts will tell you, teach your dogs not to jump on people. Because if they get used to it, they jump on children. And children might fall, or uh, fragile elderly, and they might fall and hurt themselves. Is that good? No. No. So you understand the real love and just superficial love. And the judgment, yeah, and the wisdom. Love has to go with wisdom, okay? Not just uh, say, okay, love, love, love the astral. <laughs> Astral sentiment is different from true love. Astral sentiment, a binding karmic bondage, they are not real love. That love can break any time as long as the karma is no longer there, it's broken. Or some situation is better, that love will move to another object. <laughs> you understand? These are different loves. Real love never dies. Real love doesn't change. Real love is always there and with wisdom. Another thing, I just remember what, I tell you what, okay? Maybe I don't remember all. <laughs> okay, okay, good, good. For example, okay, when I treated the Chinese from China to go eat with me, I chose the elderly. I told them to choose the elderly because I, I explained to them that older people have less chance to have that. Younger people will maybe, maybe not, but have more chance to come to see me than the elderly. Of course, maybe tomorrow they're sick, they don't feel well not to come or they might pass away. And just to let them eat with me one time, that will make them remember forever. And that will boost their happiness in their old age when children are not <laughs> <laughs> often visiting them anymore, when society doesn't feel the need for them anymore, when uh, they just stay sometimes alone, cook for themselves, even when they're not well, they have to do everything for themselves. That will boost their happiness. That is good, not because I discriminate. And then the next day, it's not their turn anymore. It's going back to usual. Usual is that the Westerners, they sit here, because we are a hospitable race of beings. We are Asians. We treat guests very, very nicely, yeah, uh, cordially and, and truly with, with love, yeah, with welcomingness. So that's what we do. And then the brother thinks that he should bring all the older Chinese people to come here because Master did that. I be a good guy, you know, <laughs> good police, bad police. And then I have to come. <laughs> Either I have to move them, or it's just a surprise. So of course I did not move them, but I was not very pleased because it's not a Chinese turn anymore. And he did that just to copy, just to show people that he's a good guy and make me become a bad guy if I have to move the Chinese away. The Chinese or Taiwanese look similar, okay? So if you take up all the best places and give our guests 
even China or Vietnam or Cambodia, we are very near and we have shorter legs. So we can squeeze together. We're used to it. We like family ties. Even now, many families still stay together. Older people and children and grandchildren all stay together in the same house. They like family style. They like neighborly closeness. That's us, the Asians. But mostly the Westerners, their legs are long. You give them a little room so they sit in the front. They came farther than most of us. The Taiwanese, we are here. <laughs> and then the Vietnamese, just <laughs> the neighbor. And Asians all look the same. So we let the Westerners mostly have some privilege. And I told the kitchen to cook something nice for them to eat. Maybe a little different from what we, the Taiwanese or Chinese, or I eat normally. Because the Westerners, they don't have a chance to cook such a beautiful food for themselves. They don't know how. So we, as a host, good host, we give them the best. That's not because I look down upon the Chinese or the Vietnamese or the Taiwanese, but I want the Westerners to have the best as the guests. That is good for Taiwanese and Chinese as a whole, good for your reputation. They come from different countries in the West, America, Germany, Austria, you name it. They come from different countries. They go home, they tell their people, oh, you know the Chinese. Oh, they are just such fantastic people. That is good for your country or not? And you think, you have to compete with me. Uh, you do your ego talk, and you don't do what has a deeper meaning, and you don't do what I teach you. That's not love, that's just showing off. Just copy, and cheap copy, okay? And then if I go correct that uh, brother in charge, then uh, everybody will think, oh, master, uh, you so discriminating, yeah? You like the Westerners, you don't like us. It's not true at all. You have to look deeper inside of everything before you judge anybody or even master. Everyone on the Westerners, when they come home, they will spread your names, your reputation, they will love. And every country will welcome more Chinese because they don't know who is Chinese, who is Vietnamese, who is... <laughs> On the first look, they don't know if it's Chinese or Korean. Even all the Asian people, Korean, Chinese, Taiwanese, Vietnamese, Burmese, Cambodia, Thailand, etc. I made you a good deal. That is if you think of business, if you want to think that way also. But what I thought was that the, the Westerners, they're so sincere, they came from such a long way. To, to such a place. They have better countries. <laughs> you understand? If you go to Europe, you see how it looks like. Everywhere looks so clean, tidy, beautiful. And they came to us. Eh? We are not all that tidy and, 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 and magnificent like the European countries. I'm telling you the truth. No? Yes or no? Yes. Yeah. If you go to Europe, you know. It's um, a little bit more civilized. <laughs> I'm sorry to offend you. At least on the outside, eh? the houses are yeah. beautiful. Many quarters still preserve the old, old buildings, and they are like palaces. The architecture, the way they build, the way they organize their streets, and everything is absolutely wonderful. That's my type of country, my type of buildings and streets and organized society, my type. And they don't mind whatever we are. They love your master. They come to see your master, taking all their holidays and some of their savings. In Europe, because the standard of living is higher than in Taiwan or in most Asian countries, so even they earn a lot, they spend a lot. So for them to spend the money to buy the ticket to come here, it costs a lot for them. In Asia, we live simple and frugal. We don't care much about the outside appearance. Therefore, we don't spend a lot of money. We can save some, but in Europe, you have to have the standards. Like in America, one old lady, she's too old to mow her grass outside her garden. The police came and took her to jail. <laughs> and later, all the neighbors, the youth who came and helped her, 
every week to mow her grass so that she didn't have to go to jail anymore. And I was in uh, one of the trailer parks in Belgium. Trailer park only. You understand what I'm saying? The big park and everybody buys a trailer, parks it there, and, and pays the, the rent for the land. Yeah? That the land belongs to a community or one person, then you pay the rent every, every year. It's not much, about 1,000 euros or something. But your grass, your garden, you have to trim. Even if you have just a little square of grass like this, I mean, how much garden can you have in a trailer park? I have about this square piece of grass and some planted uh, flowers that they already had there. But I had to take care of it. The neighbor made sure. They told me, you have to trim this and that. All the neighbors have to do it. Trailer park. You imagine that you think only poor people live there. Oh, not necessarily. And then my dogs, you know, sometimes I let them out quickly and they just do their things <laughs> on that piece of grass. Dogs, you know, they scratch it to cover whatever. And then the neighbors, see what he's doing? You see what he's doing? Really, I'm not joking. You think it's a laughing thing. It is like that. They live by, you know, order rules. Many countries are very exceptionally famous for being Ordnung, order, yeah? Like Germany, Switzerland, all of the European countries are mostly like that. Sunday you cannot make smoke, you cannot uh, burn your leaves in the garden, you cannot uh, cut the trees <laughs> without permission, and uh, every other thing. You cannot litter on the street. If they catch you, you have to be fine. So much, so much. And then they come here. We are very disorderly here sometimes, jumping for blessed food and squeezing to see the master, all those things. They are not so used to it. And their legs are long. I want to give them a little more room to cross their legs even. And you can see sometimes they put it out here and there. And <laughs> so it's not like I don't have love for you or I discriminate between the Western and the Asian. There are many benefits of treating them well for themselves as well as for you. Hmm? And their love for your country will bless your country also. And the people who hear a good story from your country, your special hospitable treatment to them, they hear the story also feel very happy, you know? And the atmosphere is happy. The more happy the atmosphere, the better for our world and for you, of course. We live here, we live in this world. So you have to think deeper and not so hurriedly criticize your master huh? or anybody. Okay? They are two similar things. Uh, no, not really similar, different, but what I mean is between the wisdom and the, the mind's judgmental kind of attitude or habit, you must cut it out. Cut it out. <laughs> <laughs>